People have been writing songs about women for almost as long as songs have existed. But who are the enigmatic figures behind your favorite hits? Ah, Sweet Caroline, one of Neil Diamond's most iconic songs and the eighth inning anthem for Boston Red Sox fans. The song hit number four on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in 1969, filling listeners' ears with sweeter-than-candy pop melodies. But who exactly was the Caroline about whom Diamond was singing so fondly? Turns out, Sweet Caroline was inspired by two people. Diamond's then-wife, Marcia Murphy, was the main muse for the upbeat number. He hit a songwriting speed bump, though, as he needed a three-syllable name to fit the song's beat. Marcia, of course, is only two. So he went with Caroline instead, and the rest is history. And who was the other inspiration? Well, it was none other than late President John F. Kennedy's sole daughter, Caroline Kennedy. Apparently, Diamond was inspired after he saw a snapshot of JFK's eldest child in a magazine. Diamond told the Associated Press, It was such an innocent, wonderful picture, I immediately felt there was a song in there. So now you can rest easy, knowing that a real Caroline helped bring good old sweet Caroline to life. Toto's 1982 album Toto 4 is full of soft rock anthems, including the band's smash hit Africa. It's also the album that's home to their ultra-catchy song Rosanna. Filled with big horns and lyrics of a long-gone love, this song had Toto fans everywhere cranking up the volume and wondering if there really was a real-life Rosanna. The answer, like much of rock music history, is a bit messy. In an interview with Song Facts, Toto member David Page, who wrote Rosanna, said it was about a teenage sweetheart of his, but her name wasn't Rosanna. So where did the name come from? Well, it appears to have originated with actor Rosanna Arquette, who was dating Steve Piccaro at the time they were recording the tune. As Page told Song Facts, he had just met her and was looking to title a song with her name, and it just fit perfectly for that song right there. So it's got her name on it, but it's really about another high school sweetheart, which is how songs happen sometimes. So technically, Rosanna isn't really about Rosanna Arquette, unless you ask her, that is. Back in 1982, Arquette was more than happy to spread the word that she had inspired the tune, despite Paige and other members of Toto claiming they simply used her name for the song. In exquisite pop-rock fashion, Billy Joel delivered the tale of a lower-class guy romancing an upper-class gal with 1983's Uptown Girl. It's one of Joel's classic songs, filled with infectious melodies and accompanied by an iconic music video. But who is the real-life Uptown Girl that inspired Joel to pin this number? Many believe the song is about model Christy Brinkley, who starred in the Uptown Girl video as, well, the Uptown Girl. While it's an easy connection to make, it's not entirely accurate. In an interview on The Howard Stern Show, Joel revealed that he started writing Uptown Girl when he was dating model Elle McPherson, a woman he dated shortly before Brinkley. I wasn't even dating Christy when I started writing the song. I was right. dating Elle. Right. And What I, a lineup of women. It was I, amazing. In fact, Joel revealed in the same interview that the song was originally called Uptown Girls. According to Joel, however, he changed the song to be about Brinkley once they started dating, and of course, shortened the title to Uptown Girl. Let's be real, it's tough to come off the back of a career with the biggest band in history, but if anyone can do it, it's Paul McCartney. The ex beatle embarked on his own career after the group split in 1970, releasing his first solo album, McCartney, that same year. On that record, you'll find the heartfelt Maybe I'm Amazed, a tender yet rocking song inspired by a very special someone. McCartney wrote this declaration of love for his beloved wife, Linda McCartney, as an ode to the support she provided him during the post-Beatles period. Linda wasn't just McCartney's inspiration, though. She was also his collaborator. The couple made music together for both McCartney's solo work and as members of the band Wings, with whom Linda sang and played keyboard. Linda and Paul were married in 1969 and remained together until Linda died from breast cancer in 1998. When No Doubt took a break from making music in the early 2000s, singer Gwen Stefani decided it was time to explore her interest in pop, enter her debut solo album, 2004's Love Angel Music Baby, which featured the infectiously catchy Holla Back Girl. The song provided a huge win for Stefani. It was her first solo song to reach number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in 2005 and solidified her reputation as an all-time great pop artist. Once you listen to the lyrics, though, you begin to realize that this is actually a retaliation song. So who exactly inspired Stefani to pen a track like this? Well, you have to connect some dots to find the answer. 
In an interview with Billboard, Stefani said she was inspired to write the song because, at the time, she was being bullied by someone and was being called a cheerleader. And while she didn't point the finger at anyone, some speculate it's about Courtney Love. Many reference a Love interview published in 17 when she said, I'm not interested in being the cheerleader. I'm not interested in being Gwen Stefani. Turns out, Love wasn't the only lady to allegedly inspire Holla Batgirl. The song's producer, Pharrell Williams, revealed that Naomi Campbell inspired the song's chorus in an interview on Campbell's YouTube show, No Filter with Naomi. The model apparently told someone she ain't no Holla Batgirl, and the phrase stuck with Williams. Music legend Elton John has given us some of history's catchiest pop and rock songs. Make no mistake, though, he and songwriting partner Bernie Taupin have also crafted a number of touching tunes that tug at the toughest heartstrings. Case in point, Candle in the Wind, written in 1973 to honor the one and only Marilyn Monroe. 24 years after the song's release, it would be reworked in tribute to another woman who took the world by storm. We have reports from Paris that Diana, Princess of Wales, has been killed in a car accident. Princess Diana, nicknamed the People's Princess for her popularity, died in a car crash on August 31, 1997. Elton John, her friend of many years, had the somber task of singing at her funeral. Taupin reworked the lyrics of Candle in the Wind to reflect Princess Diana's life and legacy. And Candle in the Wind 1997 was introduced to the world as John sang goodbye to the Princess of Wales. While John said he wouldn't perform Candle in the Wind 1997 again unless under very specific circumstances, the song gained some serious steam on the charts that year. According to Billboard, it reached number one on the Hot 100 and stayed there for weeks. If you turned on a radio in 2014, you no doubt would have heard John Legend's dreamy ballad, All of Me. The song hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100 that year and stayed at the top for three weeks. It also topped Billboard's pop airplay and adult contemporary charts. Legend's soulful voice, combined with that gorgeous piano composition, make it stand out as a love song for the ages. And given the song's highly romantic content, it shouldn't come as any surprise who Legend's tune is about. Yes, All of Me is about Legend's wife, Chrissy Teigen, who was also featured in the song's music video. According to Teigen, she could tell from the opening lyric, which mentions a smart mouth, that the record was about her. Perhaps writing an iconic, swoon-worthy song is the secret ingredient to a long-lasting love. The couple have been together since 2006 and share four children. British rockers Coldplay have a slew of hits under their belts, including Viva La Vida, Clocks, and The Scientist. Their versatility in both style and content is impressive. They can produce both radio-friendly pop hits and sentimental ballads within the same record. One of their most emotional and heartfelt songs is 2005's Fix You, a tender ode to grief and support. In an interview on The Howard Stern Show, Gwyneth Paltrow said Coldplay frontman Chris Martin, whom she'd married in 2003, wrote Fix You for her. According to Paltrow, he wrote it as a way to express his wishes to have helped Paltrow as she grieved the death of her father, to whom she was very close. Paltrow has often mentioned in interviews that, even before she met Martin, she listened to Coldplay's second album, A Rush of Blood to the Head, to help her cope with her father's passing. And when my dad was sick and dying, his second album I had on repeat all the time. And Fix You wasn't the only song Martin wrote about Paltrow either. He also wrote the song Moses, a touching tune found on their 2003 live album for her. Typically, love and warmth aren't two words associated with hard rock songs. An exception to that rule? Guns N' Roses' classic 1987 track Sweet Child of Mine. Kicking off with a legendary slash guitar line, the song builds into a real rockin' ode to someone special, complete with sentimental lyrics that highlight a safe, innocent, and powerful love. It's one of Guns N' Roses' signature songs, and one beloved by fans. The song reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 back in 1988. So who exactly was the person who inspired one of the band's biggest hits? Erin Everly, the then-girlfriend of lead singer Axl Rose, was apparently the muse behind the lyrics. She also appeared in the music video for the beloved ballad. The star-studded pair, who first met one another in 1986, were wed four years later in 1990. The relationship was tumultuous, to say the least, however, and the duo would end up splitting in 1991. The drama doesn't end there, though. Everly later accused Rose of abuse and sued him in 1994. The lawsuit reached an out-of-court settlement. Armed with killer tunes and enough in-band drama to put a daytime soap opera to shame, 
Fleetwood Mac took rock by storm when they released their iconic album, Rumors. One of the album's most popular songs is Go Your Own Way, which reached number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in 1977. If you listen to the lyrics, you'll hear the story of a love gone wrong, and as it turns out, the end of an in-band romance inspired the hit song. Fleetwood Mac guitarist Lindsey Buckingham penned the tune following a split from bandmate Stevie Nicks, whom he had dated for several years. And Nicks had plenty to say about the breakup, too. She famously wrote the band's biggest hit, Dreams, about their split. They got to speak their piece, and we got two epic breakup songs for the ages. Johnny Cash is one of history's most famous songwriters. His unmistakable sound captivated audiences across genres, from country to rock. And The Man in Black wrote some pretty gritty music during his time. He even famously recorded a live album at Folsom State Prison in 1968. So yeah, you could say Johnny Cash was a tough guy, but he also had a sweet side. In fact, one of his signature songs was written for someone he loved. Cash wrote I Walk the Line, arguably his biggest song, with his first wife, Vivian Liberto, in mind. He was aware of the temptations that arose on the road when he was first starting out, and the song served as a reminder for him to stay on the right path for her and their family. Alas, Cash eventually gave in to the temptations of touring, and he began to experience addiction issues. I never did cocaine or, or heroin, or never did shoot up, but I did all every pill they ever made. I was a connoisseur. Meanwhile, Liberto was left wondering if he and singer June Carter were becoming more than just collaborators. And, well, you know the rest. Cash and Liberto divorced, and the singer married June Carter just a few years later in 1968. And while people often focus on his relationship with Carter, it was Cash's love for Liberto that inspired this hit. If you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP, 1-800-662-4357.